Okay, acoustic treatment, the simplest guide I can make to acoustic treatment. In this video, I wanna cover the initial stages of acoustic treatment and what you can do if you don't have a load of cash. First, how to get a more focused sound. Second, how to tackle bass, swampy, swampy bass. Third, how to have a mixed cloud, even if you're renting or you can't drill into the walls, etc. So first, how to get a more focused sound. The first thing that we're gonna do is tackle our first reflection points. So first reflection points are the places where the sound hits the wall and bounces back first, right? So for me, that speaker's here, it's pointing that way, it's gonna go all the way back there, then it's gonna bounce back into the room and hit my ear. But in a small room, this is basically everywhere, right? I think it's worth remembering that speakers don't just push sound forwards out of the woofer and the tweeter. Sound's coming out the side, the top, the bottom, and the back. So when you're in a small room, there's loads of reflections happening all the time. So I guess what I'm saying is, ideally in a small room, you do still need a lot of treatment. The problem doesn't go away just because you've got less surfaces. So luckily for me, when I was setting this room up, I already had six DIY panels and five gig acoustic panels, which means I've basically been able to cover most of the surfaces already without spending any money. I just need a, a mix cloud. If you don't have panels, you can use anything like duvets, throws. If you've got space in your room for a sofa at the back, that'll be a great bass trap. But if you can get a few hundred quid together, building your own acoustic panels is pretty easy and it's super affordable. They're so effective. In the past, when I've done recording sessions at people's homes or set up mix rooms for like a week when I've been mixing an album with someone, we've used like mattresses against the back wall. We've um, like moved sofas in, all that sort of stuff. It just soaks up a lot of the sound and can be super effective. And then if you get things like flutter echoes, if you clap and you can hear it go chuk, 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 like shimmer across the top of the room, that means you maybe need to put in a cloud or you've got too much bare reflective space. So anything will help with that. The main point is some way you want to treat your first reflection points with something. If you can get a mirror and tape it onto your speaker so it's hanging over your tweeter and get someone to walk around in the background they can point at the spots where you see them that's the first reflection point and you can just put panels up there any sort of soft furnishing duvet cushion anything will help just whilst you're getting started so bass bass is a massive problem in home studios and an even bigger problem the smaller the room it just gets super swampy and super undefined like a huge thing when people start mixing is They'll be mixing like a bass, whether it's a synth bass or a bass guitar, and one note will be jumping out absolutely loads, and then another note, you'll barely be able to hear it. You end up with this crazy EQ curve and loads of compression, and really, the actual problem is the room that you're listening in. And some, some notes are at certain frequencies that are being like cancelled out, and then others are like hitting your room node and they're being amplified loads and just like not decaying, not going anywhere. They're just swamping around. So what can you do in those situations? And um, you can buy bass traps. You can make bass traps. Making them is pretty complicated. They're harder than acoustic panels, but building just like really thick acoustic panels will work. But you, you know, you got to use what you got. So in the beginning of this series, I said that I had zero budget for this room because I'm opening a studio soon and I don't want to spend any money on the interim, right? So I just had a look around the house and saw what I've got. At Dunham, which is just like a home furnishings store in the UK, I've got these fabric trunks, right? And a load of spare duvets. So I've stuffed them full of duvets. And because we moved house, I've got cardboard boxes. So I've got cardboard boxes and that's where all the spare bedding is. All of it's in there. And all of that is just pushed into the corners. And... It's in the corners that you need them, really. Corners are where bass likes to build up. So where the wall meets the floor or the ceiling, and then even more so where two walls meet like that, right? And then you've got the floor or the ceiling. Sure, that might not be the most effective trapping, but like I said, we're not spending money on this room. I could go and spend 1,200 quid on a load of tube traps, and that would make this room sound better, but that wasn't actually an option. So just making improvements where you can. And then if you get budget later to improve it, you can do. There's no point waiting for a perfect solution 
just start chipping away at it. So we're going to move on to a mixed cloud and a mixed cloud, even if you're renting and you can't fix things to the wall. So what you need to do is build a minimum of two frames, right? One to go on your left and one to go on your right. If you built a third one to go behind your speakers, that would be really good as well because it would strengthen it, right? And then you can run um, planks across the top of it. So the frame's got to be above your listening position, right? The higher you have it, if you need to be able to stand up in it, it's probably better to make it nice and high, like, you know, so you can stand up in it. But, and then you can just hang your panels off of that, or you can just put your panels on top of that. And that's going to be really posh, right? It might cost a bit of money. You might need to get help from a chippy or a joiner. Um, but that is huge. You're basically going to make yourself a little mix room within a room. You can put side panels up behind your speakers, above your head. It's going to do so much for making your mixes translate into the real world. And the reason why I've said this, because even though that might be a little bit more expensive, it might cost you several hundred pounds, you can do something similar, you know, without building the frame and without building the acoustic panels. If you can just find a way, even if you've got mic stands lying around, anything like that, just to hang up duvets between them, that kind of thing, a clothes rail with a throw balanced over it, either side of you, behind you. And then, you know, there's so many different ways. I've done so many different home studios over the years and sure, they don't look that professional, but it doesn't really matter if the mixes that you're doing sound really good. I should say, whatever you do, make sure it's sturdy. Make sure that if you're hanging anything over your head whilst you're working, it's safe, okay? <laughs> so now you might find yourself in a situation where your room's too dull. For me, I've put so much absorption in this room and none of it has um, diffusion panels on the front of it. All of it's just hardcore um, absorption, right? So it's absorbing a lot more highs than it is lows. Therefore, the room's got a bit too dull. The ideal way to fix this, right, is to put strips of wood on the front of your acoustic panels, which turn them into diffusion boards, right? And that'll look and sound good, but it'll cost money. So I've just turned the high frequency shelf up on the back of my speakers. I can just boost the highs and that's evened it out now. So that's happening without me even touching an EQ in my DAW. I just know that my speakers are compensating for the amount of absorption I've done in the room. So the next video is going to be all about learning your room and potentially even tuning your room just so you can get really good mixes that translate. Like and subscribe for more of that. I run online and in-person events for home producers to meet new people, meet new people to collaborate with and get mixed feedback. You can find a link to that in the description of the video. All the best.